Bien. Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. Now we are back here on our journey with the minor arcanas. And before we get into every suit and the meaning behind the cards, I want to give you guys an overall glimpse of what it represents when we talk about the numbers. Now, every suit in the minors, we have the water element, the fire element, the earth element, and the air element, which is swords, cups, pentacles, and wands. And in those suits, we have the numbers one through 10, representing collectively the energy of that specific suit. So as you guys can see here, we have the four elements. We have the wands, we have the cups, we have the pentacles, and we have the swords. Now, this is what you're going to be learning in these lessons of the minor arcanas. Like I mentioned, they have numbers and we go from one to 10 in each separate suit. Now, we're going to focus primarily on this video on the energy of the numbers. Yes, every every suit is different, as you would see here. The wands representing the element of fire. The cups representing the element of water. The pentacles representing the element of earth. And the swords representing the element of air. Now we will go into their energies, as well as the symbols behind the depictions, behind the imagery. But like I mentioned in this video, we're going to focus primarily on the numbers and the energy or the vibrational energy of the numbers itself. Now, let me scroll a bit down so that we can see here. As you guys can see, we have here the numbers, right? Um, now, something that I want you guys to really focus and understand is, let me scroll up so you guys can see here, we have the elemental pentagram, right? Which is the representation at the very top, which is spirit. Then we have air, water, earth, and fire. Something that I've been teaching you guys in the major arcanas and now here in the minors is to understand that every single card in the tarot is collectively connected. There is no separation. Yes, there is different elements in the minors, depending on the suit that it is. Like I mentioned, the suit of air or the water or earth or fire. But collectively understanding that spirit overpowers all of the elements because spirit is what becomes the elements. So you see spirit at the very top, think of it as the major arcana, right? The major arcana is always going to overpower the minor arcanas. Why? Because the major arcanas are a representation of spiritual, powerful, high vibrational cards. So when we talk about the minors, it is important to understand that the same way that we see the mind, the majors being more, they carry more weight, more power than the minors, they are still collectively all connected and important. But here in this pentagram, you guys can see spirit at the very top. I want you guys to understand that when we're talking about the minors, the spirit, see it as the aces. Try to understand it as Yes, the ace in any suit is collectively connected from the one to 10, which is why the aces represent the number one. But the aces carry much more powerful and heavy energy than that of the following cards, the following numbers. So I want you guys to understand, like I said, see the spirit at the very top of this pentagram right here, that it is high vibration, when we talk about the tarot itself, the major arcanas carry obviously major power, spirit. When we talk about the minors, see the spirit 
or the high vibration energy with the aces. That's what the aces represent, which is why they are very separate from the rest of the two to 10 cards that come with the aces of that suit. So I hope that this is, uh, that you guys are able to understand that in a much easier or simplistic way. Yes, the ace is number one and it is the beginning of that suit, but it brings with it very high vibrational energy. Why? Because the ace is the seed of the beginning of that element, whatever element it's representing. So we're going to see here, you see the ace here, the ace of wands. It is the seed of the suit of the element of fire. You see the ace of cups here, which is the representation of the seed of the element of water. You see here the ace of pentacles, the seed of the uh, energy and representation of the earth element of the pentacles and so on with the ace of swords. So I just want you guys to understand that distinction and the difference. Now, when we talk about numbers here, it is important to understand that in the minors, we have the aces all the way to the 10 of that uh, suit. So it's cards that are represented with numbers that is that goes from the one all the way to the 10. Now, let's focus on the energies of these numbers. Now, as you guys can see, the aces are very separate from the rest, from the two to tens. Why? Because the twos, the threes, and the four represent the cardinal signs. The five, six, and seven are representative of the fixed signs, and the eight, nine, and 10 are represented in the mutable signs. Why is this important to understand? Because when you're doing a reading, as an example, whether it's a reading for a friend or for yourself, if you have multiple numbers or repeated numbers, as an example, if you get two uh, or three uh, number two cards from the different suits, um, because the twos represent cardinal energy, it can be speaking to you about any of the cardinal signs or the fixed signs or the mutable signs. So this is why it's important when we're talking about timing, when we're talking about seasons, it's important to understand what the numbers represent as well as what um, what energies they carry to be able to fully be able to tap into your full potential of reading and interpreting the cards. Now we're gonna look at the aces. Like I said, aces are very separate. Why? Because it is pure energy. And the aces represent, in general, it is a representation of, give me a second, let me move this, make it a bit smaller so that we can see. Okay, so we have here the aces and the aces representing, I'm trying to move this. Give me one second. I'm trying to. I'm trying to move this a bit so you guys can be able to see. Okay, here we go. So with the aces, the number ones, it is representing pure energy of its suit, whatever suit it's representing, whether it's the cups the swords, the pentacles, or the wands, which is the fire energy. It represents new beginnings, fresh starts, news that may be coming, potential, opportunity, and change. This is the vibrational energy of the ones. Regardless of its suit, like I said, we will get into the different suits, and as we progress, we will learn together. But I want you guys to really focus on the number of vibrations here. Now, moving along, um, we have here the twos, right? And the twos representing cardinal, and it represents unionship, partnership, harmony, duality, opposition, creation, opposites, balance, potential for creation, or the 
beginning stages of creation, of taking action. Now, Now, looking at the number threes, it also represents the cardinal signs. And the number three, as a general, it represents development. It represents creativity. It represents groups, collaboration, willingness to delegate, wisdom, selection, growth. And the number threes usually represent neighbors or anyone that is outside of your inner circle. Now, moving along, we go into the number four. And the number four also represents or carries the energy of the cardinal signs. And it usually represents foundation, success, strong base, building, manifestation, stability, rest, and celebration. Now, with the fours, like I said, understanding what the numbers usually represent, the energy or vibrational energy that they carry, it will be much more easier to understand the meanings behind every single suit and the imagery as well. But like I mentioned, we're focusing primarily on the numbers here. So moving along, when we look at the number fives, it usually represents the fixed signs and the number five represents unstability. It represents fight, struggle, difficulties, turmoil, fleeting, conflict, change, challenge, and sometimes loss. Moving on with the number six, also representing the fixed signs. It usually represents effort restored or effort restored, balance, realignment, bridge, and when we talk about bridge, it usually represents the bridge between the past, the present, and the future. So thinking of that on a grander scale of things, it represents the bridge between where you were, where you're at, or where you're going to. Now, it also represents stable ground or moving forward or movement forward reconciliation, and harmony. Moving along to the number seven, also representing the fixed signs, it usually represents spirituality, control, lessons, experience, reevaluation, knowledge, steadfastness, truth, or truth-seeking, analytical, and reflection. Now, some of you guys may wonder, how can the number seven represent spirituality and also control? Well, the thing is that to be able to tap fully into your spirituality, we as humans have a tendency of having the need for control. So in some shape, way, or form, the number seven can also represent the releasing of control. And that's where spirituality comes up because the number seven is a very spiritual number. Moving along now, as you guys can see here, we have the number eight. And the number eight also representing the mutable signs. It represents positive change, movement, momentum, shifting, nearing, mastering, intentional effort, opportunity, new ways of doing things, achievement, change, and advance, advancement. Now, moving on with the number nine, the energy of the nine also carries the mutable energy or the mutable signs representing near, completion, pause, moment to rethink or to reanalyze, attainment, transition, materialization, wisdom gained, and fruition. And finally, we get to the number 10, also representing the mutable signs. And it represents the end of a cycle. Moving, moving faces. This is almost the trajectory of going into, because one must understand when you get to the 10, the 10 doesn't necessarily mean the end of that, because from the 10, it goes back to the one beginning again. So think of it as the transitional energy of when you get to the nine, 
the nine is almost the transition of actually moving or having to take movement towards the end, sorry, the end, which is the number 10, but also the transition of the new beginning or embarking on a new beginning, because from the 10, we go back to the ace again. So this is representing the end cycle, moving faces, rest or healing, getting ready for a new journey, a new cycle, a culmination, a completion, a transmutation and a renewal. Because like I mentioned, from the tens, we go back to the one. It is a never ending cycle of journeys and lessons and wisdom to be gained. So as you guys can see here, I hope that this gives you an insight into the energies that the numbers carry so that when we get into the actual suits of each one and go through all the aces all the way to the tens of that suit, you're going to have a better understanding of the representations and the meanings behind it. And you're going to be that much more effective and that much more concrete and almost a certain when you're able to interpret the readings or your personal readings for your self-development. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It is a very quick and to the point video, but I hope that you guys enjoy and I will see you guys next time with the beginning of the suits. I will see you guys then until now or until then. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.